Club today. It is so good to see you. And today we have a special Good News Club. I wonder, do you know why? Why is today a special Good News Club, Charlie? Because it is nearly St. Patrick's Day! That's right, it is nearly St. Patrick's Day. Do you know what date St. Patrick's Day is on? Do you know, Charlie? Hmm. Hmm. <gasps> That's right, it's the 17th of March and it's the 17th of March every year and St. Patrick's Day isn't just celebrated here in Ireland, it is celebrated all over the world. Isn't that right Charlie? <gasps> yes. How else do people celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Do you know? What do you do on St. Patrick's Day Charlie? Hmm. I wear green. Yes, you wear green. Maybe you're watching Good News Club today and you are wearing something green as well. We're wearing something green, aren't we, Charlie? Yeah. Yes, we are because it is our special St. Patrick's Club. Well, we are going to sing our very first song and this song reminds us of how God is big and strong. So let's get ready to sing our first song. <gasps> Wait, before we start, we need to count how many rainbows. You're right, Charlie. It is good that you reminded me. Today at Good News Club, you look out and see how many rainbows you can spot throughout our video. Okay, so that's your challenge for today. Spot how many rainbows you can see in our videos. Thank you so much, Charlie, for reminding me. I nearly forgot. You're welcome. Yeah. My God is big and strong. Well, I just love that song. That is a great song because it reminds us that God is big and strong. But not only that, God loves everyone and God loves you. Isn't that wonderful, Charlie? Yeah! It really is. So what is St. Patrick's Day really all about? Some people think that it's about pots of gold. Some people think it's about leprechauns. Some people think that St. Patrick drove snakes out of Ireland. But really, who was St. Patrick? And what did he do? Oh, oh, I have a joke about snakes. Oh, you have a joke about snakes, Charlie? Yeah. Okay, what's your joke? What is a snake's favourite school subject? Hmm, what is a snake's favourite school subject? Do you think, do you know the answer? Do you know, Charlie? It is history. Oh, history. It's history. Did you get that joke? 
You like jokes, don't you, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. And I've got loads of joke books at home. Loads, loads of joke books. Loads of joke books? Yeah. Maybe you have joke books at home as well. And you really like jokes too. So you like to hear jokes and tell jokes, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. You know lots of jokes. Yeah. You really do. Well, let's find out more about who St. Patrick was. Would you like to hear more, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, let's find out more about who St. Patrick really was. St. Patrick's Day is always celebrated on the 17th of March. You will get the day off school, but how would you normally celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Maybe you decorate your house with shamrocks. Maybe you even have a party. Maybe you would go to a parade or you walk in a parade. But everybody wears green on St. Patrick's Day and I'm sure you will wear something green as well. But who was St. Patrick? What did he do? When did he live here in Ireland? And why do we still celebrate him today? St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. The Bible says that anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour is a saint. That means that if you've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to be your saviour, then you too are a saint. That gives us a little clue about who Patrick is and what Patrick believed in. But Patrick was born a very long time ago. He was born in 372 AD. That's 1600 years ago. Patrick was born in Great Britain. And at that time, Great Britain was part of the Roman Empire. So everybody spoke Latin. Patrick was born into a very wealthy family. He had five sisters and one brother. And Patrick was just like any other normal boy. He went to school and Patrick would have loved to go fishing. He went hunting. He loved spending time with his friends. Patrick's mum and dad believed in God. They believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and they trusted in him for salvation. And when Patrick was growing up, he was very often told about God. His parents would have read to him from the Bible and they would have helped him to learn verses from the Bible. And they wanted him to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his saviour too. But Patrick didn't really have much interest in God or in the Bible. He didn't really think much about these things. One night when Patrick was 16 years old, he woke up. He could hear screaming. He could smell smoke. What was happening? In the village where Patrick lived, there were lots and lots of houses. And as Patrick looked out the window, he could see that there were hundreds of ships along the seacoast. Patrick lived in a village along the seacoast. But what were these ships doing in the middle of the night? Where did they come from? And why were the people screaming? These ships belonged to Irish raiders. They were like pirates and they had sailed from Ireland to Great Britain and they would go along the sea coast and they would raid the villages and they would put them on fire. And that's what they were doing in the village that Patrick lived in. They were stealing the jewellery and the horses and all the valuable things that people had. Patrick was grabbed and he was tied up and he was marched down towards one of the ships. Where was Patrick going to? He was so afraid. What about his family? Were they hurt? Were they okay? As Patrick looked back at his village, he could see that the village was on fire. These raiders had come and stolen everything, even the people, and now the whole village was burning. Patrick was marched onto the ship, and as Patrick sat on that ship with a thousand other people, he was really, really afraid. He began to think about God and he thought to himself, am I being punished because I didn't listen to God? Because I didn't want to know anything about God? Patrick didn't know where he was going. The ships eventually sailed back to Ireland and they sailed into a place near Belfast in the north of Ireland. Patrick and all the other people were marched off the ship and as Patrick stood there, he could see all of the jewellery and the horses and all of the gold, all of the valuable things that these raiders had stolen. Patrick didn't really know what they were saying because he didn't understand their language. Patrick was sold as a slave to an Irish chieftain. This man was a cruel man. He was a very rich man, a very wealthy man who lived in a very big house and he was also a druid. Druids did not believe in God. They didn't know anything about God. But instead they worshipped the sun and they worshipped trees and they worshipped things that God had made. But they didn't worship God. Patrick would now be his slave. While this Irish chieftain lived in a really nice house, he would have had parties, he had lots of food. 
There were lots and lots of comforts in his home. Patrick didn't have a home to live in. He was treated as a slave. He was a slave and he was made to go out and to look after the sheep and the pigs that belonged to the Irish chieftain. He would have lived out on the mountains. He would have had to hunt and find his own food. He had to find somewhere to sleep every night. It was during this time as a slave that Patrick became friends with the other slaves, the other young boys who were looking after the sheep and after the pigs. He learned to look after himself. He began to get really strong and he knew how to hunt for food and how to start fires, how to keep himself warm and each night he would find somewhere to sleep. During this time as a slave, Patrick began to think about God. He began to think about the Lord Jesus Christ and how he had died on the cross and was punished for his sins. Patrick didn't have a happy life as a slave. He knew that his only hope was in God. His only hope was to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as his saviour, and that's what he did. He was sorry for his sin, and he believed that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and was punished for his sins instead of him. Patrick believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. His life changed. He now belonged to God, and Patrick now spent time worshipping God, he spent time singing, he spent time praying to God and telling the other slaves about God as well. They would spend times together praying because many of these slaves too trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. You know, Patrick didn't have a Bible. He had a Bible when he lived at home, but now as a slave he didn't have his Bible. But he was able to remember the verses that his parents had taught him as a child. He was able to remember all of those things that he'd heard as a young boy and as a teenager. Patrick was a slave for six years. One night he had a dream and God spoke to him and he heard God say to him, you will soon return home. Patrick was excited and he began to gather up things for his journey home. He was getting ready to go home. One night he had another dream and in this dream God spoke to him again and he said, your ship is ready. Patrick could see a ship and it was a ship from Britain and it was sitting at the seacoast. Patrick then got up and it was probably the middle of the night and he gathered up his things quietly and he left. He knew that it was time to go but he didn't want anyone else to see him and so Patrick started on his long journey to find that ship. You know that ship was 200 miles away and Patrick had to walk the whole way to that ship. But how did Patrick find this ship? He didn't have a mobile phone. He didn't have Google Maps. He didn't have a sat nav or a map. How did he find his way to this ship? He found his way to the ship because God showed him how to get there. God led him to the ship. After days of traveling, Patrick finally got to the harbor and there was the ship. It was the exact same ship that Patrick had seen in his dream. Patrick was so excited. He knew that God had led him to this ship. As Patrick got closer to the ship, captain said where is your passage a passage is another name for a ticket of course patrick didn't have a ticket he had very little money he was a slave the captain said you can't get on this ship patrick walked away from the ship he was so disappointed he was confused what was happening god had brought him to this ship and now he couldn't get on what was going to happen to patrick you'll have to wait to find out more We're now going to play a game called the Big Ship. If you're watching this at home, you need to follow these instructions. These are the instructions for the game. The captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Seagulls overhead. The cook's in the kitchen. Okay, these are the five instructions. Let's see how well you can follow these instructions. Ready, steady, go. The captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. The cook's in the kitchen. Seagulls overhead. Ah. Climb the ropes. (laughs) Scrub the decks. The captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Aye, aye, captain. Cook's in the kitchen. Climb the ropes. (laughs) Scrub the decks. Cooks in the kitchen. Seagulls overhead. Scrub the decks. Scrub the decks. Seagulls overhead. Cooks in the kitchen. Climb the ropes. 
climb the ropes? <laughs> Captain's coming? Aye, aye. I got done. <laughs> Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Seagulls overhead. Cooks in the kitchen. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Okay, that's really good. Now we're going to do it a little bit faster. See, so can you join in at home? Captain's coming. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Cooks in the kitchen. Captain's coming. Seagulls overhead. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Captain's coming. Cooks, cooks in the kitchen. Cooks in the kitchen. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Captain's coming. Seagulls overhead. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Captain's coming. Aye, aye, Captain. Well done. Patrick had just been turned away from the ship by the captain. As Patrick was walking away, he began to pray. He didn't know what was going to happen next. Only God did. And Patrick trusted in God and he began to pray about what had just happened. As he finished praying, he could hear the pounding of footsteps behind him. As he looked round, it was a sailor and he shouted, Wait, wait, the captain wants to see you. Patrick then turned round and he went back to the ship. And the captain said to him, You can get on. What? God had just answered Patrick's prayer. Patrick was now on the ship and during his six years as a slave, he would often pray for his family. But very soon he would see his family again. Would they still be in the village? Would they all still be alive? Patrick made friends with the sailors and after just three days of sailing, there was a huge storm. The storm meant that the ship was grounded on a deserted part of the coast of Britain. They didn't know where they were. After a few days, their food ran out and they were wandering about. The captain said to Patrick, you pray and you ask your God for food. Patrick began to pray. He knew that God would supply all of the needs. He knew that God would give him exactly what he needed. And so Patrick was praying and very soon they found a whole herd of wild pigs. They were able to capture them and they had food for themselves. But these sailors began to think that Patrick was some sort of a magician and they didn't want Patrick to leave. Patrick, I'm sure, told them about God. They forced Patrick to stay with them. After two months, Patrick managed to escape and he managed to find his way home to the village where he had grew up. When he got there, he was delighted to discover that his parents were still alive and they still lived in the same place. Patrick was so glad to now be home. His mum said, don't ever, ever leave us again, Patrick. But very often Patrick thought about Ireland, the beautiful green island where so many people did not know about the true and the living God. They didn't know that the Lord Jesus Christ was the saviour of the world, the one who could save them from the punishment of their sins.
You know, Patrick often prayed for Ireland and during that time at home, he studied the Bible and he was able to help in the church and help other people. One night, Patrick had a dream. In this dream, there was a young man and he was carrying thousands and thousands of letters and he was able to carry them and he brought them to Patrick and he picked out one letter and on the letter, it said the voice of the Irish. Patrick was able to read the letter and as he was reading this letter, he could hear hundreds and hundreds of voices. And these voices said, come back, come back and teach us. Patrick knew that this dream had come from God, that God wanted him to go back to Ireland to tell the people there about God and about his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When he told his family, they were really disappointed. They were like, Patrick, you can't leave again. Patrick knew that if he was to leave to go to Ireland, he probably would never, ever come back again. He probably would never see his family ever again. But Patrick knew that he needed to obey God, and that's exactly what he did. And so Patrick gathered his belongings together. He got on a small boat and he sailed back to Ireland. When he arrived in Ireland, he began to preach and to teach people everywhere. He walked everywhere and he told everyone that he met about God, about his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, how the Lord Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. He told them that Jesus was the only one who could forgive them for their sins. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who can forgive you for your sins. There's a verse in the Bible in Romans 10 verse 13. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. If you're sorry for sin, call out to him. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. Thank him for dying on the cross for you, for taking your punishment. When you do that, you will have your sins forgiven by the Lord Jesus. You will be saved and you will belong to him forever. Patrick told the people of Ireland this wonderful news about the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, not everybody was happy with what Patrick had to say. Patrick's life was very often in danger. Many of the very powerful druids who lived in Ireland hated him. They didn't like him talking about God because they had their own gods that they wanted to worship. They wanted to worship the sun and the stars and the trees. And so Patrick's life wasn't always easy. But the amazing thing is that many people did trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Many of these people began churches and they too started to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ as well. One day some men came to Patrick. Some of these men had been druids, they had been pirates, they had been Irish raiders, they had been warriors, but now they trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour and they were following him and they really wanted to know more about the Bible. They wanted to have the Bible for themselves and they said, can we have copies of the Bible? Patrick just had one Bible and in those days there was no printing presses, there was no photocopiers. Patrick told them that if they wanted copies of the Bible, that they needed to learn how to read and to write and then they would be able to copy parts of the Bible out for themselves on sheets of paper. That's what these men did. They learned how to read and write and in little huts all over Ireland, these men would be writing out parts of the Bible. Patrick loved God and he spent the rest of his life here in Ireland. He never ever went home. But because Patrick obeyed God and came to be a missionary in Ireland, Ireland became a changed place. Many, many people began to follow the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour because of the message that Patrick brought, the message of salvation. Many of these people would have copied out God's word and they would have studied God's word and they would have spread it out and sent it to other people. They started churches all over Ireland. They went to be missionaries in other countries around the world. Many people's lives were changed because they heard the good news of the gospel, that the Lord Jesus Christ can save them from sin. If you are a Christian and you know that your sins are already forgiven, that you belong to the Lord Jesus, then you too can tell others about him. You too can be a missionary just like Patrick, just where you are here in Ireland or whatever country you live in. You can tell other people about the good news, that Jesus can forgive them for their sins that he can give them eternal life, he can give them new life, and he can change their lives. Isn't that amazing? Patrick was a man who loved God. He loved God's word, the Bible, and he loved to tell people about God as well. God is living, he's alive to
we had 8 million sheep. There were more sheep than people living in Ireland. What is this here, Charlie? A giant, 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 giant shamrock. A giant shamrock. I don't know if it's that big, but it is a shamrock. And a shamrock is a symbol of Ireland. Maybe you have seen shamrocks in different places. Have you seen any shamrocks in different places, Charlie? Hmm. In parades and... In parades, yes. Mm. <gasps> at the airport! Yes. yes, that's right, at the airport, on the airplanes, is that right? Yeah, on the Aer Lingus. On the Aer Lingus airplanes. And those airplanes go to many different countries around the world. Maybe you have been on an airplane before to a different country. Maybe it's even been an Aer Lingus plane. But we see shamrocks in lots of different places. You can even find shamrocks in your garden. Did you know that? Maybe whenever club's over, you'll go out and see, can you find some shamrocks in your garden? But in our story, we heard that Patrick used the shamrock to tell people about God. Do you remember that, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. But what did he actually tell them about God? Well, let's listen really carefully now and find out what Patrick told the people in Ireland about God using this shamrock. There are some things in life that's hard to understand. Maybe sometimes our teacher says something in school and we can't understand. But then she draws something or writes something on the whiteboard to help to illustrate what she's trying to teach you. And this helps you to understand. Well, that was the same for Patrick. And he began to teach people about the God of the Bible. How that God loved each one of them so much that he sent God the Son into the world, the Lord Jesus. And how God the Son was punished and died on a cross. And if the people believed and turned away from their sin and trusted in the Lord Jesus, then God the Holy Spirit would come and live in their life. As the people heard Padraig speaking, they thought that Padraig was speaking about three different gods. That there was God the Father and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Padraig used a shamrock. You know, there's only one shamrock, but it's got three different leaves. And Padraig explained to them about the Trinity. I know this word is not mentioned in the Bible, but it does speak about how that there's only one God, and God can be in three different persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It tells us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, and verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That there's only one God of the Bible, but this God can be in three different persons. It can be God the Son, and God the Father, and God the Spirit. This triangle has all equal sides, and the Bible teaches that God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all equal. It also teaches that God is the Father, and God is the Son, and God is the Holy Spirit, all at the same time. That's how great God is. But we also know that whenever God created this world, it says that God was having a conversation in heaven. 
And this is what he said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. We know from the book of Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 24 that God says that I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens. Here we know that God alone was involved in creation, that he wasn't talking to angels. And this implies that God was talking to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. On another occasion, we read in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 7, this is when the people on the earth at that time all gathered together in one place and began to build a large tower. But God wanted them to separate and to multiply all over the earth. And it says that God had this conversation in heaven in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 7. It says the Lord said, come let us go down and there confused their language. You know, that's why there's so many different languages in our world today. But here we see that God was having a conversation with God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Whenever the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth, the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 30, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Now the Lord Jesus was proclaiming that he was equal with the Father. On many occasions, the Lord Jesus used the names of God that was used in the Old Testament to describe himself. You see, he was telling others that he was God here on earth. We know on another occasion that the Lord Jesus forgave a person's sin. But the religious leaders say that only God can forgive sin. But here Jesus was telling everyone that he was God. On another occasion, whenever the Lord Jesus Christ was going back to heaven, he said this to the disciples in John chapter 14 and verse 16. Jesus said, he will give you another helper to be with you. You see, the Lord Jesus wasn't always going to be with his disciples. He was going to go back to heaven, but he was going to send another helper. That was the Holy Spirit. But this other helper that was going to come would be of the same kind as the Lord Jesus. That he would be equal with the Lord Jesus. You see, you remember how in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, God says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That God is always going to be with us. But the Lord Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 28, says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, that he was going to be with them. But he wasn't going to be with them in person, but he was going to be with them in spirit. And that was through the Holy Spirit that would come and live in their life. You know, that's the same for us. How the Lord Jesus was physically with people in the New Testament when he was here on earth. But never even back to heaven, it meant that God the Holy Spirit can be with each person now all over the world. You know, if you are a Christian and you believe in the Lord Jesus, then God the Holy Spirit lives in you. On another occasion, whenever the Lord Jesus was being baptised, it tells us that God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And then it tells us that the Holy Spirit came upon the Lord Jesus. Now here we see the Trinity mentioned at the Lord Jesus' baptism. So this is what Patrick used to explain to people about God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. We celebrate St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March. History told us that Patrick died on the 17th of March. Some things are named after Patrick. Churches, buildings, clubs and people. Happy St. Patrick's Day.
Wow, we've just been singing that song. God is living, loving, and lasting. That's right. Let's say that together again. God is living, loving, and lasting. And we also heard today as well how Patrick used the shamrock to tell people about God. Can you remember what Patrick told the people about God? He told them that there is God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Well done. We hope that you remember that. And we've heard so much about Patrick today, who he was, but more importantly, we heard about how Patrick believed in God, how he followed God, how his life was changed by God, and how he told other people about God as well. You too can be like Patrick today. You can trust in God, Trust in him to have your sins forgiven and follow him and tell others about him as well. Can you remember where our video was today? Charlie, do you know where the video was? The where am I? Mm. Where was it? Do you know? I think it was Phoenix Park in the city centre. That's right, it was Phoenix Park in the city centre of Dublin. Did you know that that's where we were in our video today? I hope that you were able to spot all of the rainbows that have appeared in our video. You've lost your teddy Jimmy? Yeah. Oh, I don't know where it is. Maybe we should have a look. Will you help me look for the teddy that's called Jimmy? What does he look like? He's green. He's green? And everything he's nearly all green. He's all green? Yeah. Well, let's look and see can we find him. Hmm. Well, I don't see him over here. And I don't see him around there. Oh, is that him there? Yeah! Is that Jimmy? Yeah! Hey, we're finding him, everybody! Did you spot Jimmy? Well, thank you so much for coming to club today. We hope that you have a really good St. Patrick's Day. And we hope that you remember to wear something green. Isn't that right, Charlie? Yeah! Yeah! Okay, bye!